All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back for yet another episode here of Knight Brothers Commentary. Um, Again, diving into something that I'm really excited about today. This is a fun one, always fun when we get to talk a little bit of uh, pop culture, if you will. Um, And we're diving back into the MCU. Uh, For those of you that don't know what that stands for, it is the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Uh, Matt and I have done several different episodes regarding some of the past uh, movies and now television shows that live with inside the MCU. Um, Today, we are going to kind of recap the series that just wrapped up last week which is WandaVision. This was sort of the first MCU television series featured on Disney+. Plus. Um, I thought it was phenomenal. Really loved it from start to finish. A little, you know, t- totally took you through sort of a whirlwind from, from the beginning where you were kind of scratching your head and now setting up all kinds of different things within the multiverse, it seems like. So with that, Matt, I'm going to flip it over to you and let's get started on WandaVision. Yeah, to me, this show does did not really follow these like the stereotypical superhero format that you would find in most other shows as well as movies in general. So, I mean, I guess really, I mean, like you said before, I mean this this series started off really weird. Like it it, it started off as kind of like a weird nineteen fifties rom com, I guess. Yeah, I mean they really <laughs> it was very interesting. I mean, when Marvel said that they were going to come out with a sitcom. Right. That's that's really what they were framing this around was sort of a yeah. sitcom. You know, I think everybody was very anxious to see how they would um, how they would attack that sort of genre and and make it feel like the MCU. And and, I, and what you're talking about, Matt, is that the first couple of episodes really did not feel like the MCU at all. They really didn't. Right. It was a totally different tone, a totally different look and feel. And it kind of had you wondering, OK, We've seen these characters before. We understand what Wanda's going through. We understand that there's something, there's a lot of anomalies happening, right? Um, in what we later find out is the hex, right? Yeah. Um, but they just felt so different. And I they really did. And I'm like, okay, the last thing that we saw was, I guess it would have been maybe Spider-Man Far From Home. I mean, was that I the last? I think so, yeah. You know, that was the last movie we saw. And prior to that was Endgame. So you have all that going on. And then you kind of jump into this 1950s, like you said, rom-com, sitcom, whatever you want to call it. Um, definitely different. But I think once we started to understand the why behind what was going on, it, it, it made sense. Yeah, and that's true. Because, I, mean, sh- I mean, the show p- kind of progressed. Like, it starts in the 50s. The second episode is, like, the 60s. The third is the 70s. Yep. And I want to say the fourth is, like, late 80s, maybe. Yeah, they really... I, they kind of they kind of flash forward for the decades. Like, yeah, and, and they paid homage to a lot of the sitcoms of the of the time yeah right they they were really capturing a lot of the 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 look the feel of each different decade um and i just thought it was great i mean you know i I, i'm 31 years old gonna be 32 here in a couple of months and you know i didn't i wasn't around for 50s and 60s television but i remember watching reruns of bewitched i dream of genie i love lucy some of those older you know sitcoms and and i enjoyed some of the nods that they paid to that and then you you get into you know the 90s and early 2000s and and even they did some episodes that were a little more current that felt like modern family but you had like a full house vibe in a a oh i know because i I, yeah because when i saw that episode i'm like yeah i kind of recognize this (laughs) yeah it feels very full house um and and it was great and you know the funny part is that whole the whole nod to full house is that wanda is played by elizabeth olsen yeah, and her sisters, Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen, were sort on of the, the show. <laughs> yeah, the feature of Full and House as the as the young. I think they. I don't think there were twins on the show. I think each of the twins mm. played the same character over time. Uh, I could have that wrong. It's been up forever since I've seen Full House, but you know, even even the Uncle Jesse sort of being p- portrayed right. Yeah. By Quicksilver, or who we thought was Quicksilver, yeah. and Uncle Pietro who we later find out is Ralph Boner, <laughs> uh, which is just, they had so many twists and turns in this series that if, if you're an MCU fan or you're just a fan of um, humor and, and a little bit of drama and action, I mean, it's a great, I think this series can stand alone for somebody who maybe is new to the MCU. It was, it was wildly entertaining, um, really from start to finish in, in very different ways, episode by episode. 
I mean, here's the thing, though. I would say the later episodes, at least for me, are more entertaining than, say, the first couple. Because, I mean, I'm not a big fan of sitcom, rock com. I've never liked that at all. Yeah. And, and I'm, at, I'm with you. As the onion started to get peeled back, so to speak, yeah. and, and we started to see what was actually going on and, and sort of driving these sitcom mm-hmm. episodes, it was more intriguing. Yeah, it, exactly. It, yeah, it, once we started getting introduced to sword and how they're reacting to the hex and like what they're trying to do to stop it. Yeah. Yeah. That's when the show really kind of started picking up steam, at yep. least for me. And I'm just like, yeah, you know what? Sword's going to be huge. Yeah. It, sword it, is going to be huge. It, it sword is. Sword is going to be the new shield in my opinion. I, I don't think I there's mean, any question. And, and the way I, and here's the thing. I mean, shield really didn't play much of a role outside of, Phase two, really? Yep. I mean, phase one and phase two was really kind of Shield's thing. Yep. But I think phase four and five are really going to influence, are really going to be, are going to be really influenced by sword. Well, and and the nice thing about having a, uh, having a sword or a shield, so to speak, that, that sort of is used as a vehicle, vehicle to connect a lot of dots within the MCU, right? Yeah. You know, you've got Nick Fury. You've now got Monica Rambeau with the ties to Captain Marvel, okay? Yeah. Who is now, I think, is probably going to be Photon, if I remember if, if I remember right. That is correct. She is now Photon as, yeah. in WandaVision, she yeah. passed through the hex several yeah. times, which was essentially what was the kind of the chaos magic yeah. we found out that Wanda was using to sort of hold hostage an entire town uh, yeah. for her own emotional benefit. Yeah. Um, but no, I mean, you think about it just from, from the Nick Fury connection, the scrolls connection, yeah. Monica Rambeau, which is now photon, the connection mm. to captain Marvel. You've got Darcy with the connection to the Thor storyline. Yeah. You've got the FBI agent, Jimmy uh, Woo, Jimmy Woo. Oh, the, I loved him in this show. Uh, everybody loved him. I think we're going to see him pop up. And I heard, you know, I'll give a little plug to, um, a channel that I watch a lot. Emergency. Awesome. Oh, he's good. He is good. He's really good. If, if you have not listened to Emergency Awesome talk about MCU and break down some of these episodes, he does a phenomenal job. I would highly recommend subscribing to his channel. But he talked about the audience falling in love with Jimmy Woo and and maybe him playing sort of an Agent Coulson kind of role where he, you just see him pop up throughout various... I mean, now you say it. That makes sense because yep. he kind of does have that Phase One Colson sort of vibe to him, yep. except he's probably a little more charming and funny as opposed to uh, oh, what's the actor's name? God's gonna drive me. Yeah, Clark Gregg. Yep. Yeah, Clark Gregg is Colson. I mean, I mean, don't get me wrong. Colson definitely had some funny moments, especially in Agents of Shield if you haven't watched it. But I mean, I just feel like Jimmy Woo's. Uh, charismatic funny charms are at least a little bit better in my opinion but that's just my opinion yeah leave let us know in the comments whether you whether you like colson or jimmy woo better yeah no doubt i would be an interesting <laughs> poll um, but anyways i think you know we saw him first in ant-man right yep as the fbi agent kind of going after uh going after ant-man in that in that storyline but again sword is kind of being used to tie a lot of these storylines together i do think you're right we're going to see that really reintroduced in in these upcoming phases as a you know the new shield if you will um but if as we kind of digress and get back into wandavision a little bit i want to get your thoughts on you know what all we picked up what did we learn about wanda about vision about you know wanda's chaos magic and what that means for the mcu going forward agatha harkness um and where we think you know obviously there was a resolution there at the end of the episode the final episode but um I'm sure she'll be on the shelf. We'll see her again. Oh, absolutely. We will see her again. I kind of want to say we might see her again in Doctor Strange. Yep. I mean, that's that's just my personal opinion. I don't really I don't really have anything to back that up. Again, I'm just saying that's my personal opinion, but yeah. To me, I just feel like that's it just makes the most sense because we've already I mean, she knows that the Sorcerer Supreme exists. She yep. knows that the Dark Hold exists. Yep. And I feel like the dark hold is probably going to be corrupting Wanda cuz you see in the second in the second uh, end credit scene Most where credit Wanda scene. yeah yep. where Wanda's reading it and then she hears her kids. Yep. So that tells me that the dark hold is probably corrupting her mind. Right. And what I found interesting that we learned from Agatha Harkness in the final episode was that um you know she she 
mentioned that Wanda, as the Scarlet Witch, is more powerful than the Sorcerer Supreme. Yeah. Right? So, you know, and that's very interesting because... You know, when it when it came to the this world of sorcery, if you will, and magic or whatever you want to call it, we always kind of looked at Doctor Strange and and you know the quote from the original Sorcerer Supreme was you know Strange was supposed to be the best of us, right? We heard yeah. that in Endgame, and so it's interesting setting up for Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Obviously, Wanda being an you know an Avenger you think of them as being allies. But to your point, I wonder if through this dark hold, right? Yeah. And, and some of this chaos magic, if she does get corrupted. Yeah, because if you watched Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. season four, yeah. they actually mentioned the dark hold in, in that season. Okay. And a lot of the characters in that season, like, uh, oh, geez. Uh, God, what's that doctor's name? It's going to drive me nuts. I mean, but yeah, Ada was... Okay. Uh, was originally an AI that got corrupted by the dark hold and then became alive. Yep. Became Madam Hydra essentially. And then you also had a uh, uh Robbie uh Ghost Rider's uncle got corrupted by it. Okay. See that these are things I have not now, seen here's the thing. sealed. So yeah, I now, don't here's know. the thing. I mean the dark hold has a different look in WandaVision than it does in uh Agents of Shield. So I'm just wondering, I mean I know that Agents of Shield is no longer canon. Yeah. But I'm just wondering if they're, if the dark hold in this version is going to have the same effect that it did in Agent of Season. So that's that's my preface yeah. for saying that Wanda might be the villain in Doctor Strange's Multiverse of Madness. And I think he and I and I do think that she might start off as an ally, but then eventually become an enemy, or maybe vice, vice versa. versa. Yeah, kind of an anti-hero sort of. Yeah. It'll be very interesting because you know. I, I can see it going both ways. I mean, I think what I gleaned from the post credit scene is that we're gonna we're gonna see something around Wanda's children. Oh, absolutely. Right? And and she's being called to her children either by the dark hold or or magic in and around there. I think there could be, you know, if if Wanda sort of toes the line between ally and villain. Maybe there is a true villain that is that is corrupting her, so to speak, right through I mean, the, through the use of the dark hold. I mean, that could be. Uh, and so I wonder who they may, you know, introduce there. That's again, that's what I love about the MCU and Kevin Feige and what they've been able to do is that, you know, there's so many different directions that they can take it, and yeah. they seem to be very good at not necessarily. Um, they do a really good job, I think, of towing the line between using the comics as inspiration and, and following it beat by beat. Right. Yeah. So they've, they've shown to us that they're, that they're going to pay respect to the comics, but they're also going to adapt characters in a way that, that allows them the freedom to create their own stories. Yeah. And, and so I, I'm always curious to see, you know, we don't have a trailer yet for Dr. Strange two and the multiverse. I don't, yeah. I don't think that's coming out till next year. It's not. I mean, so that's, I mean, yeah, the movie I know is coming out next year, so I don't think we'll we'll see a trailer, and at least until December. I was going to say, we. my guess is we see one around the time of Spider-Man, maybe in theaters, Yeah. F you know, when, exactly. when Spider-Man 3 comes out. So we'll have, we'll just have to kind of keep a close an eye on that. But I, but I love the direction the MCU is going with the chaos magic, with the multiverse, playing into some of these different things. I mean, it's just expanding in a way that I think is going to make it easier for them to introduce some of the other things that they have going on between, you know, whether it's the scrolls or the Eternals or introducing mutants in the MCU a la X-Men. I mean, yeah. we're just, we're getting into such an exciting time. Yeah. Um, I just can't wait to see where they take it. Honestly. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, Ant-Man three, I mean, I'm, I might go on a tangent here, but Ant-Man three is going to be a really interesting film. And the reason why I say that is because, we might get an X-Men cameo in that. Yep. And the reason why is because Kane the Conqueror has already been confirmed as the main villain. Oh, in Ant-Man 3. Yes. Oh, see, And Kane the Conqueror that. is essentially a time travel villain who also happens to be a descendant of Reed Richards. Who Which is, is Fantastic Four. Exactly. Yeah. Mr. Fantastic. 
Wow. Okay. See, the, and this is just, it's so much fun to be a fan for this stuff, right? Yeah. You know, I, I didn't grow up watching, you know, a lot of the cartoons or reading the comics or anything like that. But as an adult, man, it's fun to be a kid again and just kind of geek out on some of these movies. Oh, I know. Because there's just so many little things and Easter eggs that they drop throughout all these different films. I do want to ask you, because I think that this is really interesting how they left the door open, at least, with... Uh, vision and kind of white vision, yeah. right? And, and you know how how we we learned that the vision that was being portrayed inside the hex in WandaVision was produced through the piece of the Mind Stone that lives with inside Wanda. Yeah, right. And that was played out, which I think is very interesting. So she was sort of um, almost like astral projecting vision through this piece of the mind stone. Yeah, right? exactly. And, and so how does that play with the fact that we now have white vision who is at least in this timeline, right? The, 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 the Avengers post end game timeline, we now have a white vision that's out there, the flesh of vision. And mm. there was some level of transfer, right? And we, here's the thing. I mean, the, the the hex vision, the conditional vision that Wanda created, yeah, essentially, I wouldn't, I don't think gave back is the right term. He essentially unblocked all the memories that, yeah, the, the, the white vision still had of the original vision, yeah. So, so I'm what I'm thinking is white vision is gonna, I mean, I think he might try to take up the mantle of vision again, yeah, but I don't think he's gonna do it for sword. I think he's just gonna. I think event. I think what he's going to try to do is maybe like I don't know, try to revisit some of the some of the things that he now remembers, and maybe yep. I don't know, just try to get an understanding of who he is. Yeah, I could I could see them doing a you know, you know, Vision's never really had his own other than WandaVision, yeah. his own standalone kind of origin story type of you know film or series, right? I mean, we got introduced to Vision in Age of Ultron, yeah. and that was sort of you know, it was Jarvis. I mean, there's so many. I mean, there were so many layers to all. Yeah. Because here's the thing. I mean, Vision was essentially a combination of Jarvis, the Mind Stone, and Ultron, as far as I'm yeah. aware of. Yeah, because he, he was really Ultron. The body was Ultron intended for Vision's body to, to be, be his, his. Yeah. To be his housing. Yeah. Whatever. And, and if I remember correctly from that movie, I mean, Ultron, part of Ultron's consciousness is still in there. Correct. That is that is absolutely right. And, and so it's. Yeah, that's. I think Vision is a very intriguing character. I d I don't think we've seen the last of him. Oh, we, I, we have not seen the last of Vision I, at all. There's I know. No question. Yeah, I mean, Paul Bettany does a great job. Uh, I think he's really just phenomenal. How it's how he started again as Jarvis, a voice yeah. actor, yeah. and now he's you know created that, morphed that into a character that I think we've all kind of fallen in love with. He's just a very you know, um, almost prophetic, well-spoken, articulate, oh, um, perspective driving character. Right. Exactly. Um, so uh, again, just, uh, uh, this is what I love about WandaVision and the MCU being in television. Again, we get, you know, nine 30 to 40 minute episodes, yeah. you know, so we're getting almost six hours of content, right. Yeah. That is, yeah. I mean, setting up a lot inside the MCU. So oh, yeah, we're definitely setting up a lot. So, Let's talk about the other post credit scene. I want to get your thoughts on Monica Rambeau and, and Photon and kind of her powers. What do you know about that storyline and where do you think we're going with Captain Marvel 2 and the scrolls and everything with Nick Fury? That's a good question. I would say for me, I mean, Photon's powers are essentially, as far as I'm aware of, absorbing and redirecting kinetic energy. Yep. It's like when you saw Director Haywood of S.W.O.R.D. shooting a shooting at a Wanda's children and yeah. and Monica Rambeau stepping in, you can see that she's actually absorbing on the kinetic, the kinetic energy that the bullets are transferring. Yep. So for me, I mean, she, I, the way I see it, I think um, Nick Fury is going to try to reach out through Monica Rambeau to Captain Marvel in okay. Captain Marvel two. I think that's, I think that's the storyline where they're going. Okay. I mean, I could be wrong on that, but yeah. that's just that's just my best guess at the moment because we don't really have a whole lot of information, or at least I haven't done a whole I haven't really done a whole lot of research on Captain Marvel two yet. So, yep. I don't know when that's I don't know what the timeline. I is I think on that's that like twenty like late twenty twenty two or early twenty three. Okay, interesting. I, I think I could be wrong on that. All right. Well, how about this? We've we've kind of talked through a lot of yeah. Wandavision. We know that. 
you know, where we expect at least to see Wanda again is going to be Doctor Strange 2 yeah. at the beginning of next year. Um, we we know we've got a Doctor Strange cameo, I believe, coming in Spider-Man 3. If, I believe so, yes. I think that's that's what we're expecting there. Vision, we don't know. We, we expect to see again Paul Bettany, you know, again as the white Vision or some version of Vision in the future. Don't know exactly where we're going to see him peek his head. Agatha Harkness is a character that we expect to see again. Monica Rambeau in, in, in Captain Marvel 2. Um, but next week, I believe... Is the start of Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Falcon and the Winter Soldier. So we're going to get Falcon and the Winter Soldier here coming up, um, which looks like they it's going to be centered around a storyline of the new Captain America. Yeah, a U.S. agent. I believe the character's name is John Walker, Okay, if, if I remember right. There you go. And and it, from the trailers, it looks like we're dealing with some sort of plot line around the Super Soldier Serum and and maybe somebody abusing that. In, in I some, think... Unless I'm mistaken, I think it's going to be Zemo again. Okay. Oh, Baron Zemo. Yep, Baron Zemo. Oh, he's going to be coming back. I did not I, know that. I think so, because I remember seeing a trailer where he actually shows off his comic book purple mask. Oh, nice. Okay, that'll be really cool. I mean, I'm, I'm, I am really looking forward to seeing Falcon and the Winter Soldier. And for those that don't uh, remember, Baron Zemo was sort of the villain in Captain America Civil War. Yes. Uh, that, that drove some of the storyline around... Um, the assassination of, I believe it was T'Chaka. Yeah, T'Chaka, uh, T'Challa's father. T'Challa's father. And then um, certainly, you know, the Winter Soldier and Captain America and the, and what happened between... The, the, the Sokovia Accords. Yeah, so, so, Sokovia Accords, but then certainly the Civil War bringing Iron Man into it and revealing sort of what exactly happened to Howard Stark. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, with with the Winter Soldier sort of being, um, you know, linked to their death ultimately. So yeah. a lot of, again, a lot of really cool things. I'm curious to see what they do with the Winter Soldier and Sam in that series. And then I believe on the tail end of that, we're going to um, have, have a, Loki, I believe. Loki. And then we will finally be getting the Black Widow. Widow. I think that's slated for May right now. Is yes, it not? I so, believe it is slated for May. What do you look at? What Out of the, out of Captain America uh, and... and Excuse me, not what a Falcon, the Winter Soldier. Yeah, Loki, Black Widow. What are you looking forward to the most? Oh, that's a good question. I know what I'm most excited about, but I'm curious. I kind of want to say Loki. I am too. I, 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 I mean, because you kind of know I'm where Black Widow's going. Black Widow. I mean, because that movie kind of takes place before Infinity War, but after Civil War. Yep. So you kind of know where that story's going. Yep. But. And I guess you kind of have an idea where Falcon and the Winter Soldier is going, but with Loki, it's like, I mean, he's a true wild card. Like, yep. because this is, because this Loki is like, like, like post Avengers Loki, but not necessarily post Infinity War Loki. I was going to say, this is post Avengers one. one. Yeah, this is post Avengers. I mean, this is really, I mean, this be- is basically a new redemption story for a different version of Loki. C- correct. And I do think. From what I've seen in the trailers, it looks like they're going to, again, expand upon and play around with this idea of the multiverse. Exactly. Um, because it looks like we're going to see many different versions of Loki yes. in this series. And so I'm really excited to see what they do. Tom Hiddleston, I think, does a phenomenal oh, job. Oh, I love Tom Hiddleston as Loki. He was the perfect choice for it, the it, character. No doubt. And I see, I mean, I just see him as someone they... They can't let him go from a, that, that storyline. There's too much story to tell. Absolutely. Right. And so I just can't wait to see what they do with that. Um, and where, where Loki might peek his head again. I, I, I really think we're going to see him re-enter the timeline at some point. Exactly. Right. And, and, and I think once we get some more clarity around how they're going to, how they're going to explore and, and bring this multiverse to life, we may, you know, again, we may get some more clarity around around where Loki is gonna is gonna live in the MCU going forward. So, I know we've ping ponged around Matt a, yeah. a lot here. Twenty five minutes in, almost. What what else do we want to touch on to put a bow on WandaVision? We've set up a lot of different things as far as what's coming. Uh, any other co- thoughts or comments around where we're at right now in the MCU? Uh, not really. So, honestly, I just can't. I'm just looking forward to what Marvel brings because. Uh, it's going to be good. Yeah. You and me both. I can't yeah. wait. We've got so much stuff. We did not even talk about Thor, Thor, Love, Love and Thunder. Thunder. We did not talk about Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously Spider-Man, the Eternals, 
Um, there's just so much on the horizon to I be mean, there really about. is. So, guys, please leave us your comments in the section below. If you've got any thoughts or feedback on what's coming, what are you most excited for? Let us know. We can maybe do a follow episode, follow up episode to this because I love talking about it. Um, other than that, Matt, why don't you sign us off? All right, Night Brothers commentary signing out.